Hi, everyone, and welcome to uh, another episode of the Solve Network. I'm really excited to welcome my friends, Melbert and Conchetta, who are going to be today's guest experts. So a little bit about them. They uh, currently live in Florida. They've been lifelong entrepreneurs who have founded multiple med eye spa and fitness centers. Originally, they were up in New York. Now they're down in sunny Florida. Uh, they've consulted over 42,000 wellness clients and built four seven-figure businesses in the mental wellness and fitness space. Today, as part of Mental Awareness Month, we're going to be talking more specifically about mental health, mental wellness, and how to promote a higher level of mental, mental health and wellness for you. So without further ado, I'm really excited for us all to learn from both Melford and Cachetta. So welcome to the show and thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you Shane. for having us. We are so excited. It's We have all had a difficult last 18 months, 24 months, however many months. And when I say we all, I mean we all. It doesn't matter how successful you are, how perfect your family life is, how many dreams you're fulfilling right now, because when the general feel of the planet is down, we're all gonna feel that. When, when that vibe of anxiety is going through every interaction you have. And, and, it, and it was funny because we all thought, you know, moving to this online world, it would be a little buffer, but it seemed to make it even more pervasive because now you learn about every aspect of everybody's life every second. Before it used to be, you know, you'd talk to your friend for eight hours, then you'd go home and it was a whole new story, or you'd meet at the gym for an hour and it'd be a whole new story. Now we are hearing about people's depression, anxiety, 24 hours hours a day. And the worst thing is it's kids too. You know, not that I, not that I want anybody to be depressed, but you know, when you're hearing about elementary school kids being put on antidepressants, when, when you're hearing about, you know, retirees who should be in the prime of their life are having daily meltdowns because they can't even see their friends, you know, that the world is in a really wacky place. And we just want to help out any way we can to, you know, let people know what is going on because you hear everything. There's so many stories, you know, we're not going to bring politics into it, but you know, if you're a Democrat or Republican, you've heard different stories. If you're an independent, you've heard a different story. Heck, if you're a man or a woman, you've probably heard different stories. So we went to two different university presentations. We got the exact science and the exact numbers that are being used today to at least get you guys up to speed on where the world is, and the steps we can take to move it forward, both you know, financially, so, uh, spiritually, emotionally, all the things that have been impacted over these last, you know, again, 12, 24, however many months you've been into it, we wanna make sure that you've got at least some ray of hope at the end of this, knowing that there are systems in place and that people who really know what they're doing are working hard to try and bring the world back again. So we would like to put together a quick little presentation here for you guys. We just want to show you real quick. So that's us. <laughs> I am Melford Bibbins. This is my wife, Conchetta. Uh, we're both certified master trainers, and we are the founding executives of Team Innovations LLC. So we do a lot of consulting with some of the more major businesses in different industries about how mental health physical health and spiritual health are impacting not only the business world, but the home world, because they're, they're so intertwined now, you know, never before in history has there been a direct correlation between what's going on in the office and what's going on in the home. And the reason I say this is because they are one and the same now for so many people. We, we consult with uh, some major corporations that are now bringing people back in. So they are really worried about what is the next 12 months going to be because there are folks who were working from home and feel like they've had no drop in productivity. They have had an amazing time working from home. There's folks that are really nervous about, you know, going back in for COVID. You know, so there's a lot of concerns with mental health right now. So we want to go through truly the stats, the real numbers so you guys can see what's really going on out there. And when the Mental Health America program put together, they had got all their numbers together. So again, this is basically like a state of a union address. This is the state of mental health union address that we've gotten from both the MHA and from Columbia University. And I need to just go through a couple of stats for you guys. So I want you to understand what the numbers truly are. And these are current numbers. These, you know, we, we just got these numbers a couple of days ago. So everything is based on what's going on now. And, and they reviewed 1.5 million uh, applicants. So 1.5 million people were asked to fill out surveys about how they are feeling between 2019, 
2020 and now the advent of 2021. And you can see the chart. I'm going to move this out of the way so you guys can see better. Uh, you can see on the chart that everything has gone exponentially up, not just in the year, but, or not just from year to year, but month to month. month month to month increases have gone out of control on both moderate and severe anxiety. So trying to figure out a way for people to not only get rid of the moderate anxiety, but that severe anxiety has been very, very important. And that's where a lot of the push has been with some of these colleges that are doing the reviews, showing clinical ways for folks to get feeling better, both at home and in the office. So let's just think about that mental test, that mental health test. What are the main things contributing to the mental health concerns that are out there right now? And so obviously, you know, when they did this, they were taking into consideration the change that happened in people and the percentages of individuals that were maybe experiencing moderate to severe anxiety or depression uh, during this time. So some of those numbers, I mean, when you're looking at the screen here, coronavirus, it jacked that up by 27% almost, current events, 27%, financial problems, 24%. Loneliness, isolation by 70%, grief or loss of someone um, by 27%, past trauma by 46%. I mean, you can see the numbers that are there. They're pretty high. I mean, so what does this mean? The transitioning of bringing employees back into the office setting has also stirred up um, some resistance from the employees because they're feeling anxious, like Mel mentioned earlier, stressed and uncertain about the safety, as well as the safety of their family members. They're concerned about going back to the office. They're, they're going to put their family in, you know, at risk. So they fear being exposed um, in the office setting to coronavirus. They feel disrupted in their daily routines uh, as far as you know, they got really comfortable being home, having their kids home with them, being able to work from home. And now they're having to give all of that up, um, you know, even working in their comfortable clothes and having flexible hours and all of that just changes the dynamics of everything. Uh, this alone is telling us that there's a major need to provide a targeted wellness program and that addresses both mental and physical concerns for those that are returning to work and for corporations to supply a means of mental wellness being, you know, to your employees. But also let's just take into consideration those of you that continue to work from home and what that means. Perhaps you have your own business and you're trying to get back into peak performance while you're pivoting into the new norm, right? And it's, it's crucial that you allow yourself that path of ease through what I consider proper, proper uh, supplementation that can help you to eliminate some of this anxiety and fear factors and phobias as it increases your energy and focus when you're working from home. So <clears throat> as you see on the screen, Americans' mental health ratings have sunk to a new low. Each year, 2001 Gallup um, has asked Americans to partake in their November health and healthcare surveys uh, to say whether their own mental or emotional well being is excellent, good, only fair, or poor. And those ratings in that mental health area of excellent and good, you know, historically have held rates of around 81 to 89%. But this year they've dropped as low as 76%. So that means that mental health is worse today than it was just a year ago. So how do we get this turned back around? How do, we, how do we get people back into peak performance and feeling good about themselves again? Honestly, there's no faster way to increase that productivity than to empower individuals to conquer those distractions, to get a handle on anxiety, to reduce brain fog, and to eliminate decision fatigue. I mean, we're all fatigued through all of this, right? Through the targeted use of well, wellness supplements. And, stress, anxiety, depression, mental fatigue, motivation are all affected in a negative way when we don't allow our bodies that ability to absorb nutrients properly through well-balanced microbiome. Currently, most individuals that are under stress are only producing 10 of the 90% that it should be producing of dopamine and serotonins that are in our gut, not our brain. I know everybody goes to the brain, but that are in our gut. And so, you know, when we look at that whole picture, you know, getting stress, anxiety, lack of motivation, depression, um, honestly, it doesn't discriminate. This applies to 
career dads, moms, um, stay at home moms and the children of the households are all experiencing these setbacks that we're having. Once their new supplement regimen kicks in, they get out of that burnout stage and mental acuity, concentration, more productivity starts to show up for them. So just with one simple change um, to your wellness strategy, your wellness program that you're currently on can just increase that productivity, uh, more confidence, less stress, um, can create better immunity for you and a general sense of well-being at, at the office and also at home. So guys, like I said, the uh, Columbia University just came out with a study and they too recognize that there's a real weird melding between work and home life nowadays. Because they've been meshed together so often, there's really no way to separate the two unless you're going back into the office. And that brings along another set of stressors. Again, like I spoke about before, the biggest stressors for people incorporating back into the workplace, even back into the real world, if you will, is A, they felt like they were doing great from home. And they may well have been, but there's always going to be a weird disparity between the expectations of the boss of somebody in the office compared to somebody working from home. So that's that's been a point of tension, if you will, between employees and the owners of these companies is how productive have they truly been from home. The second biggest concern is folks do not want to be put into a COVID rich environment. I mean, let's all be honest with each other. You know, if you are going back to, uh, you know, Chase Bank, whatever, pick, pick up business, any business you want, you know, they might have two, three, four hundred thousand people coming back into offices, which means two or three hundred thousand people that could have been vaccinated, not vaccinated. You know, who knows? Again, we're not going to bring any politics into this whatsoever, but just that knowledge that they are being put into an uncomfortable situation is going to add stress in the workplace. And we all know when you got stress in the workplace, it tumbles back to the home life. So, you know, the, the level of uncertainty has been crazy. You know, again, this is just a quick list of the common stressors. Everybody has their own personal issues. Everybody has their own personal thing going on, but nationwide, globally, we're seeing, you know, incredible levels of uncertainty. Uh, people have been getting too much or improper information about COVID and what it's doing to them and what they can do against it. Obviously the general risk of the infection is getting people nervous. What is physical distancing? What is social isolation? You know, are you socially isolated or are you socially distanced? Those two things have been kind of interchangeable lately. And now again, bring in, you know, who's been vaccinated, who hasn't been vaccinated. We just saw on the news the other day, now they're asking people to not wear masks outside to try and get a trend going. So everybody has these different guesses, but everybody's got an opinion, you know, every news source. So that's why we go directly to these research uh, universities. We want to know what the smartest people on the planet are doing in their research to do this, not somebody getting paid to talk about it on the news. So, uh, you know, again, changes in workplace demand, changes in domestic responsibility. Who is going to watch your kids? If you have been working from home for the last year and your kids have gotten completely used to that situation, if your parents, you know how hard it is to get kids to break out of a, a uh, change anything to do with their, their daily life. You know, they just, they get stuck in a groove and it's very easy. And if that groove has been imprinted for a year, you're going to have an even harder time pulling out. So that's an amazing level of stress that's being added on to every parent who hasn't had to think about childcare over the last year. Sickness. I mean, I, I would assume everybody has known somebody that has either caught the disease or God forbid, had a really horrible reaction to it. Um, our daughter, our daughter got it. Thank, thank goodness. She's a very healthy kid. Got right through it. No problem. But we were scared to death. Of course. I mean, it was our kid. So, you know, and now let's talk about the one that's the biggest stressor of all. It's got nothing to do with COVID. Uh, honestly, it doesn't even have much to do with mental health. It's financial concerns and job security. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the number one cause of divorce and what has it always been? Money. That's been the cause of most problems in many people's lives. And it was just compounded over the last year because we didn't know what the heck was going to happen. And as always, privacy. You know, you, we've all opened our hearts. We've all opened ourselves. And again, you know, talking about being online, you know, now you're watching people's lives basically from the day, they, the minute they wake up to the minute they go to bed privacy issues are going to be very strange over the next year as people go back to the real world. So as far as, again, Columbia University's decision to try and split this between your work life and your home life, they developed the three Ps. And the three Ps are protect, promote, and provide. So first and foremost, 
protect your employees' mental health. So whether you're a business owner like Chen and I are, and uh, you know, if you are on the Solve Network, I assume that you're either a business owner or you're moving towards that. So you not only have to worry about how you are going to react, but any employees you might have or subcontractors. A lot of folks say, oh, I don't have employees, so I don't have to worry about that. But even if you're on Fiverr getting design work done, if you've got a VA that works for you, their productivity is going to be impacted by that. So you want to make sure that their mindset is as healthy as possible. You want to make sure that they are mentally ready for whatever the next steps are going to be, because none of us know what it is. We have no idea where this is going to go. So we want to make sure that we protect ourselves, our children, our employees, everything to do with moving our lives forward. Again, financially, economically, spiritually, and emotionally, we got to move that all forward. So the second P is promote, promote the positive, try and wear a smile. Yeah. We are massive fans of personal development. Uh, we have read more books than you can imagine. And everything always says the same thing. It, you know, it's, it's like when people talk about the Bible, they say, you can condense the Bible down to one sentence. <laughs> do unto others as they do unto you. Everything else is just a story about that point. That's what personal development is, guys. Every personal development book you're going to read is developing yourself to finally get to that point where you're reading that same sentence, do unto others as you would like to have done unto yourself. So make sure that you're doing things in a positive way. Get out there. Don't be the person complaining. Don't be the person pouting. Try and put a smile on your face. Read a book that makes you happy. Listen to a song you love anything you can do to bring that positivity back. And it ain't easy. We get it. We're living through it. But every little step you can take is going to make it a little bit easier for you, again, economically, emotionally, and psychologically to get through this thing. Finally, provide. Provide access to care. Now, when I'm talking about care, I mean, you know, mindfulness training. It could be breath training. It could be your yoga. It could be your meditation, the morning meditation people. But keep in mind also that your body has changed completely during this situation. So it's not just between your ears what's going on. We're all, you know, let's all admit it, you know, a lot of people drank more. A lot of people have eaten more. We've eaten differently. We have completely morphed the way we do things. Now breakfast isn't at eight o'clock in the morning. It's at one in the afternoon. You know, people are staying up until two o'clock at night, three o'clock at night, because everything has just changed and there's nothing wrong with it. That's just where your life is right now, but your body might not be prepared for it. So we want to make sure that the body is prepared for everything. Again, both, both mentally and physically, because as Conchetta said earlier, your gut microbiome controls the release of your serotonin. Serotonin is what makes you happy, guys. Okay. There's no getting around the fact the science is there. 90% of the happy chemical in your body called serotonin is released by microbiome in your gut. So when you eat wrong, when you sleep improperly, when you're dehydrated, when you're consuming alcohol, all the things that we've all done over the last year, those are all having an impact on your physical ability to be happy. So it's not just, you know, rainbows and sunshine and playing your favorite song. It's making sure that your gut is doing the right things and releasing the right chemicals to put you in that position where you can improve your life. So what is the next big thing? Obviously, the next big thing that we've all been dealing with, it's mental health issues. I mean, that's what we're talking about today. But how are you getting beyond that? We've spent the first half of this conversation talking about the problem, talking about how we got there. So let's fix it. How are we together, everyone on this call? How are we going to work together to feel better? What is the next big thing to snap us out of this? So today, I mean, you may be seeing it. They're, they're talking about it in Women's Health and Men's Health, Wall Street Journal, Outsiders, Forbes, all these magazines, you know, are, are openly talking about the effects of mental well-being. And the biggest trend in fitness will be emphasized on mental wellness and performance gains and what you get from it, right? So I think more world-class athletes, coaches, industry insiders will come forward and share their stories of mental health challenges. We're not mind and body, but we're a mind-body system. And just because you're a peak performer doesn't mean that you can't go through those emotional ups and downs as well, right? It's incredibly freeing to get rid of that load off your chest and the byproduct is you can help others along the way. You know, it's, it's well documented that mental health um, challenges greatly impact athletic performance. Mm -hmm. 
um, statistics are showing that among the professional athletes data out there, that 35% of elite athletes suffer from mental health, which manifests as stress, eating disorders, burnout, depression, anxiety, uh, relationships, um, that all impact their performance. So athletes really, really need to keep mental clarity. They need to have that alertness, that vigor to optimize in order for their peak performance to remain at peak capacity. And you know what? Just like the athletes out there, the same thing is going on with the CEOs and CFOs of corporate offices and so forth. They need to maintain that same vigor so that they can show up and lead their teams into peak performance. And this speaks, you know, words. Uh, so global wellness trends, what is that going to look like in the future of wellness for 2021? Where are we going with all of this? And, you know, I want to open the statement by saying that mental wellness affects all aspects of life. And honestly, like 80% of everything we do comes from mindset, 20% from skill set. Again, 80% of everything we do comes from mindset. So therefore, keeping our mental well-being should be a top priority for us to stay at the top of our game, right? Um, in anything that we choose to do. Studies are showing that physical and mental health are connected. Um, are connected. Your body's fitness can affect your uh, emotions and vice versa. So we really need to stay on top of all of that. Physical health is a combination of, you know, let's like eating nourishing foods and getting adequate sleep and having that exercise or body movement so we can maintain a normal weight to keep that physical, those physical problems at bay, like heart disease and diabetes, um, you know, different forms of cancers and other chronic diseases. We want to keep those at bay. And when we can have that mental well being, that's part of that component, a huge part of that component, actually. The medical community is encouraging activities like yoga, like Mel was talking about, you know, doing yoga, different forms of meditation, breathing techniques, walking, swimming, dancing, setting affirmations, you know, really um, going out with intentions uh, throughout your day so that you can manage the overwhelm that we're all facing today. So it's time to talk about Hollywood, which means I might break the rules, but at some point, point or another, I'm going to ask Shane to unmute himself because I want to get his opinion on this as well. He has been involved in this industry for a really long time. And that's where we're seeing, that's where trends start. We all know trends start from Hollywood. They start from musicians. They start from sports athletes. They start from heroes, if you will, the, the heroes that everybody has. And what we're seeing over and over and over again is this investment into mental wellness. And I'm using that word very specific because the word mental health has had these odd connotations before that really we're trying to remove because everything to do with mental health doesn't have to be quote unquote disease, disease related. As Conchetta talked about, peak performance. And again, I am speaking to this crowd specifically. If you are on the Solve Network, you at some level of your life want to reach a peak performance level, whether it's physically, whether it's financially, whether it's being the best coach on the planet, being the best parent, whatever it is, we all have peak desires. Conchetta and I, again, we've, we've run some pretty big businesses. We are peak performers and even we feel this little bit of slippage. But when we talk about peak performance, slippage could be 5%. You know, we're not talking about, I feel 50% worse. You know, I feel horrible. We just feel like we might not be quite as sharp. And that's where we're seeing Hollywood step up to the plate. That's where we're seeing these performance athletes step up to the plate. That's where we're seeing musicians step up to the plate because they are feeling that point of suffrage of not reaching their goal. I mean, you know, again, Shane, if you don't mind unmuting yourself for a second, could you please talk about how you think this little bit of slip, you know, how has COVID and this mental health issue impacted Hollywood in general. Yeah, I think it definitely has. And, and it, it's done it in a couple different ways. I think the, the biggest thing is just like you were talking about with people having the fear of like going back to the office, for instance, like that's been a big thing. When it initially broke, Hollywood did a really good job of just saying, okay, we're shutting down all production. And suddenly, you had people feeling like, okay, uh, I'm safe because I'm home, but now I don't have a job. So a lot of that stress came from 
I don't know when I'm going to go back to work because I don't know when the sets are going to open again. And luckily, mm -hmm. a lot of the studios did a really good job. And you're right. They said, OK, we're going to we're going to lead. We're going to show people the example. We're going to be able to get people back on set. We're going to do it in a safe way. You know, I listen to a lot of uh, podcasts and things that are in the industry and people have talked about going on set. Uh, you know, you're in a hotel for two weeks on location and everyone's kind of sequestered into their rooms. You know, there's no mingling. They get uh, meals to the door. Everyone's wearing masks unless they're on camera. Everyone's getting tested every day. So they're doing everything they can to keep people employed, working together, but still having safety protocols. And I think that's a great way to emulate into other industries because there are certain industries that like you can't have people work remotely. But I think the other aspect is that part of this has enabled people to say, oh, this goes beyond being safe and being kind of COVID ready and saying like, well, what else can we do to provide a higher level of safety and wellness while we're, you know, just working together on set or what have you. And one of the biggest shifts that has happened is, you know, you, you hear horror stories, especially the last couple of decades of people being like, oh, we did a 20 hour day. Uh, we did 15 days straight, you know, 12 to 15 hours a day. And so a lot of that has started to change too now where rather than saying we're going to burn people out and just kind of work them till they can't, they're, they're literally homesick or they're so upset that they don't. A lot of people I know have left the industry the last 10 or 20 years because they were so burned out. They didn't want to you know, work at 150% as normal. You now that's occasionally, and you know this from athletics, you need to have the capacity. So if it requires you to jump up to 150% for a, a little bit, you can, but you're not operating at that level. You're at, you know, 90 to 100% maybe most of the time. Because uh, if you stay in the red too long, the engines will blow up. And so some of those things I believe have been course corrected because something huge like COVID landed on everyone. And they said, oh, while we're addressing this, let's also address some of these other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you raised such a perfect point about the ability to go past what your normal numbers are. In, in weightlifting, we talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, your mechanical capacity and your natural capacity. Your mechanical capacity is, is your technique holding you back? So, you know, when you see a, a huge guy in the gym, but he can only squat 225 pounds and he's struggling with it. When you know he should be able to do 405, you look at him and you find his mechanics. You find, okay, you know, his feet are at the wrong angle. His, his knees are wrong. He's not wearing a, you know, whatever, you know, all the little mechanical things where the other side is what is his natural capacity? What can he hit if everything mechanical was in place? And that's the same way we think about mental wellness and peak performance is, you know, if your hundred percent is down to 90, your ability to dip into that 150 now became 130. So you're, you're giving yourself these threshold points that you should be able to bash through. But again, mechanically, you're stopping yourself. And the mechanism of stress, again, comes down to serotonin, comes down to dopamine, comes down to your body's ability to produce the chemicals that make you happy, that make you be able to reach your peak. This is, guys, this is a mechanical issue. Everybody thinks about mental health as being between the ears, broken brain, you know, all these other horrible things that people say, it is a mechanical deficiency of chemicals, period. If you are mechanically deficient in the, in the um, hormones that release the ability to be happy, that release the ability to have endurance, that release the ability to have yourself at your peak, you are going to have problems. So guys, that's why we're so excited to have this conversation today, because we want to get people to stop thinking about mental health as being between the ears and think of it as mental wellness as being controlled by the mechanism of your body. What parts of your body are allowing you to be mechanically well? That, that supersedes everything else. So let's just take a look at this for a minute. The future of immune health. health. Um, a lot of us are, are, are looking to balance, not boost our immune system. So that's one of the things I kind of want to address here. People were bombarded with immune boosting supplements, foods and uh, therapies in 2020. The problem is that the idea is that you, you can boost your immunity um, 
is really an unscientific nonsense. Um, it's, it's the wrong approach. Let me just put it that way. It's the wrong approach. The future is really evidence fact approaches that lead to immunostabilization, building resilience in the body, um, immunobalancing. In 2021, metabolic health, a healthy microbiome, and personal nutrition became far more crucial. So let's just look at a couple of the facts. You know, when we look at our gut bacteria, um, we manufacture about 95% of our body's supply of serotonin, which influences both mood and GI activity. Um, GI function protects the body from infection and regulates metabolism and immune system. The GI function compromises more than 75% of our immune system. So we need to address that. The interaction between the GI uh, lining and the gut microbiome um, also helps us to fine tune developing our immune system. So it's really important that we take all of that into consideration. So balancing that microbiome through specific supplementation um, will lead to greater productivity, which we're all looking for, and instantly boost our creativity and reset the brain for clarity, right? I think we're all kind of aiming for that at this point. When you create that cellular change in the body, then you'll experience much higher levels of clarity, communication, collaboration in your workplace and in your home, which we all need giving you, your company, your family, the highest level of team engagement and better rapport. And I think that's what we're all kind of looking for here, right? So guys, we have to talk about the leading cause of stress before COVID, during COVID, after COVID. As long as we are drawing breath in our lungs, money is gonna be a huge issue. And it's still the leading cause of stress and the leading cause of divorce in America. So as for some reason, we've decided that you're not supposed to talk about money. You know, you're not supposed to talk about, you shouldn't talk about sex, shouldn't talk about religion, shouldn't talk about politics, shouldn't talk about money. Why? I have no idea because it impacts everybody. So what we're trying to figure out is how can we get people away from that taboo feeling? Because that is also increasing your stress. So not only are you stressed that you're not making enough money, but you're also stressed that you've got all these other things that are piling up, like how are my clients doing? You know, I know a lot of folks or coaches out there that might be dealing with clients with financial difficulties that might keep you from getting paid or most certainly will stop them from reaching the goals that they want to reach. So the growing financial wellness movement is moving to talk about money, not feeling like it's a taboo subject, feeling like this is another part of personal development. To me, financial therapy is part of, of uh, personal development because you need to get beyond the feeling like this is a brick wall that I'm going to keep bashing on. So again, you know, we are assuming that most of the people on here are either business owners or designed to start a business, or you're already, you know, or, or you've got other things going on as side hustles, but you might have a job. Whichever one you're dealing with, finances are going to have a huge impact on you, on your family, and on your clients. So we want to make sure that we give you every opportunity to get beyond that. And that's one of the reasons why we talk about mental wellness because you got to lay the foundation for your life. Okay, we are all in a place where we're feeling like we're on shaky ground. You know, I don't know too many people that don't feel like their castle is built on sand right now because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So in order to keep that, we need to talk about the fact that money might be difficult to find. Where are we going to find it? Our clients might be economically challenged. How are we going to help them? What are we going to do to move towards both our future and our client's future to make sure there is one? because you will not have a future if you're not bringing in money and if your clients can't pay you. So we wanna bring all that together for you and show you that the next big thing that we've seen is gonna to be to solidify your life using mental wellness as a path to the future. We have seen that, you know, it, it's kind of funny to say it this way, COVID exploded this onto the news. You know, mental wellness, mental health has been a conversation for years and years and years. You know, back, we're a little older, so back in the 80s, it was bad. Back in the 90s, it was, you know, it was starting to get a little better. 2000s, we were all enlightened. So now all of a sudden, you don't point fingers, you don't say mean things to people, but it was still kind of things you whispered about. Now we've all had to deal with it. We've all had to deal with uncertainty, with depression, with not knowing where our next paycheck's going to come from, not knowing if our kid's going to get a deadly disease. So looking into our future, we need to have a solidified uh, position to work from. We want our castle built on concrete. 
So the way to do that is to get yourself in a position where you have the financial security that's going to allow you to move forward to treat your clients properly and to keep your family moving in the right position. And again, for us, the next big thing is mental health. You know, mental wellness is going to be the next big movement. And the trends are everywhere. I mean, you can go on any newscast, you're going to see that there is nothing more searched on the internet than depression, anxiety, phobias, um, financial difficulties, all these things. So we want to invite you guys to figure out your path to figure out another way to earn money for your business while dealing with the proper trends.